A strange dark fog has been consuming our school, and people are trapped inside it. I started receiving weird VHS tapes in the mail. I never asked for them, but they keep arriving day after day. In every package is a note telling me the exact time to share it with the world. To get it seen by as many people as possible. If I don't, they said bad things will happen. The following presentation is the contents of one of those tapes. Please help me and watch until the end. I violently gasped for air as I was jolted back to consciousness. My neck ached and my mouth felt like sandpaper from the unnaturally dry air around me. At first, everything was blurry, a curse brought upon me by genetically poor eyesight. I fumbled around for my glasses, only to accidentally step on them as I tried to get to my feet. To my luck, they didn't break. Hello I croaked out as I put the glasses on. That's when I realized I was in a classroom, but just any random one. It was the place I'd suffered through countless math lessons throughout my short tenure at high school. Is there anyone there I asked again. I tried to figure out what had happened prior to my strange slumber, but my memory remained hazy. It felt as if I'd slept for days, snatched out from my day to day life to be thrust into some kind of bizarre nightmare. The door that led into the hallway stood slightly open, allowing flickering light to slip in from the other side. I carefully walked over, fear rising through my body without any reasonable explanation. As I put my hand on the door handle, it just shot open. I fell to the ground, letting out a quick yelp as a dark figure towered above me. Greg the voice said. It was Brian, one of my closest friends from my early childhood. Just the sight of him gave me a brief moment of relief. The lonely surroundings suddenly seemed less threatening. He reached out a hand and pulled me to my feet. What are you doing here? What's going on I asked. We just woke up around the school. Something's wrong. He said with a trembling voice. What is? He just stared over my shoulder towards the closed windows. The blinds were blocking out what little light could possibly exist on the outside. But that wasn't the reason why Brian seemed worried. Oh no, we're too late, he said. I turned around to see a strange, black fog seeping in through the curtains, forming a thick layer along the floor. It moved slowly towards us, bringing with it a sense of impending doom. As it passed the desks on the ground, the metal seemed to rust. The wood rotted before our eyes and the paint immediately peeled off. It was as if the fog was aging everything rapidly, spinning time forward unhinged from the rest of reality. What the? I tried to get out before Brian grabbed my arm and pulled me into the hallway, shutting the door behind him. We have to get back to the principal's office. That's where the rest of the students are, he said. The rest of the students I asked. About a dozen of us woke up here. We've been looking for a way out while we searched for others, but every exit is covered by that fucking fog. What is the fog I asked? I I don't know, but you'll die if it touches you. Only light keeps it away. With that, he handed me a flashlight. Don't use it until you absolutely have to. The fog eats off the battery quicker than you can run through it. Doug already tried. He's, he trailed off. He ushered me along before I could ask any further questions. Truth be told, I was too confused and panicked to dig into what exactly was going on. My main priority was to get out of there. Only then I could figure out exactly how I'd been trapped inside my own school. We crossed an intersecting hallway. I took a brief pause to glance into each of the branching off parts. There were walls of darkness blocking off each way, funneling us towards the principal's office. The fog itself was dangling around a flickering light, seeming to feed off its warmth. For each passing second, the light grew dimmer, before darkening completely. Then, it started seeping towards the hallway. Come on, we don't have much time Brian yelled. But we were too late. The bulb at the end of our destination shattered into a million pieces, causing glass to rain down onto the floor. A flicker of light was all that remained, before the fog overtook the path ahead. The door to the principal's office was just visible around the corner, but without the light it quickly got consumed by the fog. No Brian screamed in defeat. On the other side of the door, we could hear a few panic screams. At first they were filled with agony, but as their flesh was stripped of the student's bone by the rapid passage of time itself, the screams turned to dry groans. The voices that cried out were aging, fading away in the vast darkness. 
we turned around and ran in the opposite direction, just barely able to avoid the fog eating up the intersection. With each and every path gone, we had no choice but to return to the mathematics classroom. The paint on the walls was peeling. The pictures had long since faded, leaving little rotten husks of frames that used to carry school memories. Then we passed the classroom, which was filled to the brim with black fog that got pushed out under the edge of the door. We didn't stop. We just kept running in the general direction of the cafeteria, praying to find refuge. Oh, my god. There's someone out there a voice called out from the cafeteria. But it didn't matter, because a wall of black fog was blocking our way. Though not as thick as the rest of them, it would kill us unless we kept the darkness at bay. Our flashlights won't work. We have to try, I told Brian. He stared at me for a moment, before realizing the hopelessness of our situation. He nodded in hesitated agreement as the other students were calling us from the other side, telling us to hurry up. Then we turned out flashlights on, an action that immediately started pulling the fog towards us. It's whirled around the light, eating it up. At the same time, the most minute gap formed in the wall of darkness, just large enough for us to pass through. That time, we didn't hesitate, we rushed into the darkness, praying it wouldn't consume us. Then I heard a shattering sound. As Brian's flashlight got crushed beneath the pressure of the fog, no sooner had the light flickered out than the fog wrapped around him. He let out a scream as his skin started to dry out, his face formed wrinkles and his back arched as if the vertebrae within had collapsed. Within the span of 3 seconds, he had died from what could only be excruciating pain and unnatural old age. I dove through, feeling glass shards hit my face as my own flashlight shattered. The fog reached out for me. But one of the other students snatched me away just in time to save my life. Brian I cried out in disbelief, but it was too late. Three students greeted me on the other side. Two guys and a girl, all of them seniors I'd only known in passing. They looked emaciated, starved as if they'd been there for weeks. I can't believe you made it, the girl said, yet her voice wasn't filled with amazement, but rather apathy. She seemed older than I remembered her. She must have noticed me staring, because she put on a clearly fake smile and brushed her graying hair away. Yeah, I've had better days. She joked without a hint of emotion in her voice. This place eats you up even if you're not touching the fog. Just being near it will eventually kill you. How long have you been here I asked, still in shock from watching my friend die. Months, the girl said. How? How the hell did you survive I went on. Cafeteria food. The fog wasn't very big at first just blocking the exits. There were so many of us. But now, she trailed off. Why hasn't anyone come for us? We heard voices through the fog at first. But, but what I asked. We haven't heard from the outside world in weeks. That's if it's even out. She was cut off by the fog leaking into the cafeteria. The doors aged enough to just break under its pressure. Oh god. One of the guys let out. This is it. The fog washed in over the students. They didn't even try to fight it anymore. They'd given up weeks ago, just waiting to die. But I wasn't ready yet. I crawled on my back away from the incoming wave of darkness. The girl let out a final sigh as her lungs got too dried out to hold in any air. Despite the obvious agony, she almost sounded relieved to finally be free. Within a few seconds I was surrounded, meaning any chance of survival was a hopeless fever dream. I curled up into a ball, still not ready to accept my fate. I could feel my skin dry out and wrinkle up as the fog neared, but just as I thought my time on this planet had come to an end, I saw an infinitely bright light penetrate the darkness. The light wasn't like anything I'd ever seen before. It was pale blue, almost turquoise. Unlike the rest of the lights, the fog seemed repelled by it, disintegrating into nothing. Another beam of light shot through the fog, then a third and a fourth. Before long, the entire cafeteria was lit up. A bunch of uniformed men stormed in, killing the darkness before dragging my weak body outside. Then I just blacked out. I spent the next month in the hospital. Parts of my body have aged 30 years, while others remain untouched. No one can explain what happened inside the school, nor is there any way to find out. The building has long since been demolished, covered up to pretend nothing ever happened there. I'm not sure what haunts me the most, the fact that my friends are all dead, or that most of them were mere minutes away from survival. I'm so sorry, 